For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one whose heart. Praise the Lord. We'll be in John today. John chapter 10 is where we're going to start. John chapter 10 and verse 11. If you'd like to turn there. And while you're turning there, I'd like you to go to our website and you get a chance. Crossboundministry.com. Send us an email and sign up for our newsletter. So today we'll be talking about the good shepherd, the good shepherd, amen, John chapter 10 and verse number 11. The Bible says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Many times the Lord Jesus used the expression, I am. When Abraham said, who should I tell him you are? And the Lord said, you tell him I am. Am I am that I am that I've always been and I always will be. I am. It is a title of deity, amen, of all power and all authority. I am. And that's how Jesus starts out this verse. I am the good shepherd. And yes, he is. Amen. Each time he was making a claim to the equality with God the Father, because it's the three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is part of that Trinity. You say, fully explain that. I can't fully explain it, but I can fully believe it. Amen. And so here he presented himself as the good shepherd who laid down and who will lay down his life for the sheep. You know, not always, not all shepherds will lay down their life for the sheep. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But Jesus did, and Jesus wanted to. He didn't want to die. He didn't want to suffer, but he wanted to save his sheep. And that is what it was going to take. Amen. Now that's the part Jesus was looking forward to. He wasn't looking forward to the beatings and the carrying his cross. As a matter of fact, he prayed, Father, if this cup could pass from me. No, he, he wasn't looking forward to that, but he was looking forward to the first person believing on him, the first person getting saved, the first person receiving the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what he was looking forward to, to be able to redeem his sheep. Amen. To save them. Verse number 12. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. A hireling, a hireling is somebody who's hired. In other words, they're not serving out of love or out of, out of service, out of their own heart, because this is what I want to do. This is what God has called me to do, and I'm going to do that. If I make a paycheck in the process, so be it, amen, but I'm going to do it because this is what God has called me to do. No, a hireling is someone who's, do, I'm going to do this because I want the money. I'm going to do this because I, I got to have, I need, I want the money. That's what a hireling is. For instance, a shepherd might pay someone else to take care of his sheep, like a babysitter. If you were to hire a babysitter, if a mother were to hire a babysitter to watch over her children, and somebody kicked the door in, and they had a gun, and they were gonna, they were gonna shoot them. They were gonna kill them. Is that baby gonna save all them? Babysitter? Is that babysitter gonna save all them or save herself? She's probably gonna save herself. Whereas a mother, a mother is gonna lay down her life for those children. She's going to stop them at no matter what it takes. Why? Because those are her kids. 
Those are hers. They belong to her. She knows them by name. And it is the same thing with Jesus. He knows us by name. He's going to lay his life down for you. Amen. Will you receive what he has done for you? And the Pharisees in this, this chapter, they were hirelings. They were out for what they could get out of it. Maybe it was the money. Maybe it was the prestige. Maybe it was the honor. Maybe it was the position. Maybe it was the power. Maybe it was all of that. But they were hirelings. They were only doing it, in other words, for what they could get out of it. But whereas when somebody's a true servant, they're serving God. If they get something out of it, well, amen, glory to God, that's just a bonus. But I'm still going to serve God. And that's what Jesus was doing. Hey, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do what God said. I'm going to do what my father said. I'm here to do his will and lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. And so their interest in the people was prompted by money and they received in return. That's what a hireling is. The hirelings did not own the sheep. They do not belong to them. When danger came, the hireling ran away and he left those sheep to the mercy of the wolf that catches them, that kills them, that slaughters them, that runs them off. Amen. Who is the good shepherd? Jesus is the good shepherd. And there are many false preachers out there today preaching a false gospel. They're not preaching about the one true shepherd. No, they're preaching about the one that they made up that wants you to have a nice home, perfect health, money in the bank, a nice car. Listen to me. Jesus didn't come so that you could have a nice house, drive a Mercedes, or have money in the bank, or have perfect health. No, Jesus came to save your soul from the fires of hell. Amen. He came to save you from the penalty of sin, the penalty of your own sin, which is a place called hell. Jesus gave you something. He wants to give you something much greater than a big house and a bank account and money and prestige and honor and power. Those things are nothing compared to the eternal life that the Lord Jesus wants you to have. Amen. The reason he came, the whole reason he came and laid down his life. See, the good shepherd wants to lead you to good pasture, but you have to follow him. You have to believe on him. Amen. So going back, he's talking about the hireling, the, the false shepherd, somebody who's just doing it for the money. They're leading the sheep the wrong way. All they're doing is they're, they're there for the paycheck, for what they can get out of it, but not the one good shepherd. As he said in verse number 11, I am the good shepherd. Amen. He most certainly is. Look with me in verse 13, John chapter 10 and verse 13, the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Isn't that so simple? Listen to what it says. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling. You say, why does a thief steal? Because he's a thief. Why does a murderer murder somebody? Because they're a murderer. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. It's making it so simple. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling. Because that's what he is. We do what we do because we are what we are. Amen. Now, that's not to say if you're lost, if you're not born again, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you listen to me. God can change you in mighty ways that you never dreamed of. A person truly can change. I am a perfect example of that. But if you're not born again, if you do not have the Spirit of God, you are living after your own desires, your own flesh. You are living for the devil. In other words, as the Bible says, that is your father, the devil. And so he says here, a hireling faith because he's a hireling. He's doing that. Why? Because that's what he is. We do what we do because we are what we are. Absolutely. Amen. The hireling served for pay, for money, for what he could get out of it. He did not care about those sheep. He was more interested in his own welfare than he was the good of those sheep. Now listen to this, what one old preacher said. There are many hirelings in the church today, men who choose the ministry as a comfortable occupation without true love for God's sheep. 
Anybody who has a comfortable ministry has not read the Bible, amen. You see what the disciples went through, what the people of God went through, how each one of the disciples was killed and murdered and beheaded, amen. John the Baptist was beheaded for what? For being John the Baptist, for preaching God's word. So you can, you can, you know that Satan's going to come after you if you are living for God, if you are preaching the word, if you are spreading the gospel. Hey, he is going to come after you. He does not like that. Now, if you're a cash potato Christian and you're not doing nothing for the Lord, he is not worried about you. But listen, if you're living for the Lord, if you're witnessing, if you're preaching, if you're passing out tracts, hey, he's coming for you. He wants to stop you. He most certainly does. Don't let him. Don't let him fight your battle on your knees. Amen. Give it to God. And so the next verse, verse 14 in John chapter 10, verse 14, Jesus says again, this is the second time, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Again, the Lord speaks of himself as the good shepherd. And by good, he means I'm ideal, I'm worthy, I'm the choice one, I am excellent. He is all of these he is above and beyond good. But then he, he speaks of the very intimate relationship that exists between himself and his sheep. They know me and I know them. Amen. He knows his own and his owns know him. This is a very wonderful truth. Can you believe that? The maker of heaven and earth, the moon and the stars, the sun and the sea, the one whose words are so powerful that he spoke this earth into existence with his mere words. He wants a personal relationship with you. He knows your name. Amen. He knows your name. If your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, he knows you personally. He's got you have a personal relationship with him. And if you don't, if you're not born again, he wants a personal relationship with you. Listen to me. Jesus didn't come down on the cross to save the cows or the whales or the fish in the sea or the birds in the air. No, sir, no, ma'am. He came to save souls. Because why? That's what he cares about. Many people fall in love with the creation, the, the creation, the earth and the moon and the stars, and they forget all about the one who, who is the creator. Oh, with just a spoken word, he can create anything he wants. He wants a personal relationship with you. Jesus does right there. He says, the one I, that know me, I know them, and they know me, and I am the good shepherd. I am looking out for them. If the wolf is coming for them, I'm going to stop them. Amen. Verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Truly, truly, this is a thrilling truth, a great truth. The Lord compared his relationship with the sheep with the relationship that existed between himself and his father. Amen. That's how he loves you. Just, just like a real father loves his real son. Only so much more that we can't even imagine it. Because on a daily basis, I fail the Lord. In my heart, maybe an action I did or a word that I spoke or an attitude that I have. I fail the Lord, but yet he is always faithful to forgive me. Amen. And thank God for that. He never changes night or day, year after year. He never changes. You can always depend on the Lord and he knows you. And he, he says at the end, I'll lay down my life for my sheep. Amen. Lay down my life. Again, we have one of the many statements of the Lord Jesus in which he looked forward to the time when he would die on the cross as a substitute for the sinners that we are. Now, was he looking forward to all the hurt for the beatings and all that? No, I don't believe he was looking forward to that. I believe the human side of him didn't want that. And that's why he prayed. Lord, if this cup can pass from me, he didn't, the human side of didn't want that. But his divine side did want that. He did want to be the savior of the world because he is, amen. He still followed through with what his father wanted him to do. The whole reason he was sent to save me and you. And I ask you today, 
Have you made him your shepherd? Have you come into his sheep fold? Have you trusted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you realized that you're a lost sheep and without him you're, you're being led astray to the slaughter? Amen. But there is a good shepherd that wants to lead you the way to good pasture, to heaven is where he wants to lead you. And there's not but one way to get there and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. And he is also the door. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Look at the next verse with me. John chapter 10 and verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Did you catch all that? He said, there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Hey, this is a key verse in this whole chapter right here. The other sheep to whom the Lord referred to here were the Gentiles. You see, he came to save the Jews first. Salvation is first to the Jews. But here he is also saying that, hey, I came to save the Gentiles also and bring them all into one fold, into one people into one sheep his coming into the world world was especially in connection with the sheep of israel but he also had in mind the salvation of the gentiles and thank god for that because that's what i am is i am a gentile i am not a jew but thank god it, it doesn't matter where you came from what color you are red yellow black and white they are precious in his sight jesus loves the little children of the world. And the Bible says, and Jesus said that they'll all be one in one fold and have one shepherd. Amen. They'll belong to him. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants you to belong to him. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter what crimes you've committed. It doesn't matter what family you're from. It doesn't matter where you're from, what nationality you are. No, Jesus wants to save you that you may be one in the sheepfold and have one shepherd, the Bible says. Amen. Jesus knew that they would be more ready than the Jewish people to hear his voice. The, Jew, the Gentiles would be more ready to hear those people. And I think of it like this. I go and preach in the jails and the prisons. And you know, those people, they know they need something those juveniles, they know they're wrong. They know they need a savior. Now, not all of them want it right away or will ask for it right away, but they know, you talk to them, and they know they're wrong, amen? And when a person knows that they're wrong, they're more apt to look for a savior, amen? So I ask you, have you ever realized that about yourself? Have you ever realized that you're not as good as you think you are? Because see, every one of us has a perfect mirror, in our house. When you look in that mirror, you see all the good things about yourself. And oh, how easy you are to forgive yourself. But yet, we are so not easy to forgive others. So you think about that. We should forgive others. But you look in that mirror and you realize, you know what? I'm not perfect. You know what? I do have sin in my life. You know what? I have lied. I have stolen. I have cheated. I have done something. And listen, you've broken the laws of God. And the Bible says that if you've broken one, you've broken them all. You're guilty when you stand before God. It's like going to trial and saying, I didn't really mean to do it. It was an accident. It doesn't matter. You're still guilty, the judge will say. Amen. And the same is in God's court. It's the same. Verse 17. John chapter 10 and verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Jesus looked forward to the time of his death burial. And resurrection. He most certainly did. And these words would be utterly out of place where the Lord Jesus were a mere man, but he wasn't. He spoke of laying down his life and taking it up again by his own power. Why? How could he say that? He wasn't a mere man. That's why he was God in the flesh, and he still is God in the flesh. The Father loved the Lord Jesus because of his willingness to die. And to rise again in order that those lost sheep might 
be saved. Amen. That pleased God, that pleased the Lord, that his son would do that, that his son would follow his instructions. Verse 18, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Now that is power right there. That is real power. If you have power to lay down your life, but then you have power to bring your own life back up again. That is real power. And he said there, no one can take the Lord's life. No one can take it from me. He is God. Is there anyone greater? No, God is greater than all. He had power in himself to lay down his life, but he also had power to take it up again. And you say, well, wait a minute now. I thought the soldiers nailed him to the cross. I thought they beat him and whipped him and nailed him to the cross and put him up there on a crucifixion. Yes, they did. Yes, they most certainly did, but only, only because Jesus allowed it and he laid down his life. He knew that this must be done. Amen. And so did those men kill him in a way? Yes, and that's clearly stated in Acts chapter 2, verse 23. But here he lets you know they couldn't have done it unless I allowed it. Why? Because I am all powerful. I am that I am. Amen. And he allowed it. I'm going to lay down my life for you. Whatever your name is under the sound of my voice, he laid it down for you personally because he loved you. He knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. He knew you and he laid down his life for you personally. Not for the good person, not for the person down the street, not for the rich guy. No, but for you, he laid it down. Why? Because he loved you so much, and he certainly does. He loves you. You say, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know who my parents are. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Jesus loves you, and he wants you to be saved. Will you accept him? And he's telling you right here that I laid down my life for you, and now I, can, I have the power to take it up again. Amen. And he does. His death and resurrection were essential in Acts that he, he fulfilled the will of his father. And he was obedient unto death and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Amen. So will you do what the scripture says? Will you be born again? You know, because that's a command. You must be born again, the Bible says. That's each and every person that has ever lived. Every boy, every girl, Every woman, every man, every black man, every white man, every brown man, every yellow man, it doesn't matter what color you are. Hey, Jesus loved you and he laid down his life for you. Why? That you might escape the fires of hell, that you might escape the penalty of sin. Amen. Verse 19, John chapter 10, verse 19, there was the vision, therefore, among the Jews for these sayings. Christ enters into the world and the homes and the hearts produce a sword sometimes. It produces a sword. Why? Because people say, I don't want that. You've accepted that. I don't want nothing to do with that. Don't bring that in my house. Don't bring no Jesus here. We don't need God here. We don't need none of that stuff. But when men, re men receive the Lord Jesus, hey, that's when you know real peace. That's when God gives you peace that passes all understanding. That no, no matter what, if I lose my bank account, if I lose my house, if I lose my job, if I die tomorrow, if I don't make it through the night, hey, I know I'll be with the Lord, but in a moment, thank God for that. Do you have that kind of peace? That you know that if your heart stopped, hey, I'll be with the Lord, but in just a moment. See, that's why he came to give you that peace. Will you repent of your sins today? and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries Radio Broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 
1-800-273-4451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.